2022 is almost over and it left its mark. This year was filled with events that were fun, challenging, and humbling. Let's take a look at the last 12 months and see what it threw at me. Beautiful day for a ride. January started out cold. While in Colorado at my new place in Durango, I picked up a fat bike. My new Trek Farley 7 is a quirky but fun ride that makes it a whole lot easier to get some rides in while the snow's falling. <laughs> the test ride was interesting. I learned a lot. <laughs> Teaching myself to handle a bike on snow involved more of a learning curve than I would have anticipated. Connected to the bike. Oh. <laughs> 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 uh. Yeah, I should have seen that coming. Oh, God. Snow down my pants. Oh, it's cold. I got through it, but I'm sure I'll be relearning a lot of those tricks when I take the bike out next time. January was also the month I got to go ride in Reno, Nevada. I visited Centennial Park in nearby Carson City. The trails were bleak and exposed, but they offered a ride in the Sierras where no other park would. Well, that's encouraging. <laughs> the climbs were rough and the descents were tricky. It was an odd but interesting adventure. Once again, living at sea level isn't doing me any favors here. And it was a whole lot of fun. And don't take it too slow, you know? February. It was still a bit chilly out, but I got up to Pacifica to ride Pedro Mountain. The Pacific overlooks were stunning, but the trails were just okay. I'm hoping this doesn't get overly difficult soon because it says it's a black and this is very blue right now. We had a great day on the mountain regardless. I still want to return and try out some of the tougher stuff in the area. It looks like this park still has a lot to offer. I was able to get out on the trails with my son Dennis. He's such a fun guy to ride with. We checked out the Phil's World Trail System just west of Durango. Good. It was nice to be out in the sun and pedaling hard on some great trails. Dennis really enjoyed Rib Cage and Here for More. Here we are, Rib Cage. The Rolly and Zippy trails got him to open up a bit, and a good time was had by all. I always take the outside on that one, I shouldn't. March. The Sedona Mountain Bike Festival was in full swing. I wasn't able to attend the previous year's event, but this year was one to remember. He's not gonna drink it? <laughs> With snow in the mountains above town, I wondered if it would even be possible to ride in Sedona. I hope that guy didn't crash. But my fears were put to rest when I arrived. Joe and I bunked down in a house close to the event and we partied with so many of our fellow riders. It was a weekend that was filled with challenges and great memories. Nice. Good work. You go, girl. <laughs> Slow and sloppy. After Sedona, I headed south to Mesa where I got to ride Hawes. This is a trail alliance. That just means it's an organized group that maintains the trails and tries to expand awareness and usage. Is this a good parking spot? God, where do I park? They must have been working pretty hard because this trail system isn't just one of the most beautiful places I've ever ridden. It's also great fun. Tight one. That wasn't too bad. The climbs are satisfying and achievable, and the downhills are spectacular. April. In early April, my son and I were invited to Everstoke. We traveled to the La Sierra for three days and helped Aaron of Empty Being Adventures build the place up and get the grounds ready for a season of trail work. <laughs> I cannot do it. We got to hang out with BKXC, Calirado Kid, Bike Som, The Active Life 2.0, and a whole bunch of other really terrific guys who all pitched in and helped turn a raw mountain into a mountain biking paradise. 
May. Oh yeah, he's just a bomber. He'll spend most of his time in the air, but it'll be upside down. May brought us back to the Bay Area where I got to visit a few local spots. Let's go do flow. One great ride was at the demo. <laughs> Catch up with these guys. SoCal Demonstration Forest contains some legendary trails, one of which is the flow trail. This dirt is world famous for its swoopy, flowy greatness. Yeah. We were there on the first day after the trail was reconditioned, and it was running fast. <laughs> Fantastic. A separate run down the Braille Trail, an obstacle-filled Black Diamond run, made the day complete. I cleared a whole lot more of the features than I usually do. Nice. On a quick ride at Santa Teresa, I managed to take a wrong turn and go right over the bars. I busted my finger landing on a rock and I was immediately taken out of the mix for a while. I was off the bike for a solid month. The finger lost some range of motion, but I can still use the brake levers. June. It had to happen. I finally caught COVID. I spent two weeks in bed reeling from this brutal illness. I've never been so sick in my entire life. Fortunately, I came out the other side unscathed and ready to hit the trails. We hit Arizona, Utah, Colorado, and Nevada. The family trip was super fun, and we even got to ride while we were in Durango. You all right, bud? Did you hit that route? You were going so slow, I couldn't go. With Dennis, I was able to ride Twin Buttes, Telegraph, and Phil's World. The rides were fun and, in some spots, pretty fast. We enjoyed the time together, but it wasn't all hero dirt. It's okay, it's okay. It's okay. Stay down. July. I jumped back out to Durango to ride some intense trails with my buddy Cheston. We planned three days of amazing rides in and around Durango. We started with the trails at Horse Gulch. We're going to take Sidewinder down to here and we cut across. And then we're gonna come down this big canyon, which is super red. Sweet. Riding up Telegraph is always a challenge. That last push at the top will put anybody's abilities to the test. This is freaking steep. No, I, uh, I just don't have it. No, I'm, I'm still feeling it. Riding down through Big Canyon was a first for me, and it was an awesome treat. I do not want to wash out on this trail. The fast dirt was fun to navigate, and I'm looking forward to the days when this trail is more familiar and I can anticipate the twists. Surprise. A little chunk there. Chet and I took a day to ride the famous Engineer Mountain. Oh wow, it's so pretty up here. Don't go off the road, Steve. Located just an hour north of town, this climb begins at 10,000 feet. This is where we're starting. And goes up from there. This is magic. This is just magic. The descent is the payoff for all the hard work, and it's one of the best around. We sped through the prairies and zipped through the aspen groves. It was a blast. And it made the post-ride beers that much better. On our last day together, we jumped out to the Dry Fork Trail just west of town. An exhausting climb brought us to the Colorado Trail where we met up with Hoffheins. Colorado Trail, so Denver that way, Durango that way. 
The rocky return to the parking lot really pushed me, and I loved the tech. This is exhausting. A week later, I drove up to Sun Valley to see my family. Along the way, I took two nights to ride in Salt Lake City, Utah. Deer Valley Resort was everything I had been told. Fun, intense, challenging, and beautiful. A day in this park isn't enough, Jeez. but it'll have to wait until I return someday. This is techie. The last morning in Salt Lake saw me riding up the bobsled trail. Oh boy. <laughs> that was not meant to be. A recommendation from a Redditor I jumped in on this one with my eyes open and got to experience the hype firsthand. This is not a black trail by accident. The trail gets steep and it contains jumps and drops. It was easy to catch a bit of air while honing my skills on the steep slopes. This trail is a must see for any serious rider who visits the city. But watch some videos first. I'd hate for any of this experience to come as a surprise to anyone. Bobsled? You impressed me. It's a great ride. Getting to Sun Valley was a relief. That was a long drive. Ketchum, Idaho is beautiful this time of year, and it's a blast to enjoy the town with my siblings. One day, we rode Bald Mountain, the local world-class ski mountain. <laughs> You're doing the right thing. That, that burp sucks. We can turn any event into a crazy and fun adventure, and this day was no exception. See you on the other side. I've been holding back all day. Dropping in on these trails was a great way for all of us to decompress and really enjoy the area. This trail is in good shape. Well, parts of it are. <laughs> Jeez. That just drops there? Yeah, that doesn't look like very much fun at all. The trail was moderately challenging. This is a fun one, I like this trail. Yeah! On the way back to California, It's so freaking beautiful out here, oh my god. I stopped in Sedona and met Riding Dirty to ride High Line. So <laughs> I'm here with Riding Dirty. How's it going? This trail is a real kick in the jewels. Wow. You know they're serious when they say no horses. What the hell? Nice! I absolutely loved it, but there were many sections that I wasn't ready for. Oh my god. Yeah, I'm walking. Holy crap. Man, that's crazy. I mean, I love it and I, I think it's amazing and who knows, maybe I could do it, but I'm not going to take the chance. This is also not baby food here. Oh, hey dude, how you been? He's going to come down that and then he's going to stop because if he doesn't, it's a little bit of a drop. Yeah, this is scary, man. This is very real. Nice. I don't know if I'll ever ride the chute, but I sure had a blast riding with Eric. And I can't wait to see him at Sedona next year. Cheers, mate. Right on. Oh, I love beer. August was a pretty mellow month. I got to enjoy a lot of cool trails in and around Santa Cruz, but I spent a lot of time off the bike.
September. Driving along in Cupertino, California, and I'm about to pull into Trailhead Cycler to pick up my new mountain bike. My wife and I made a decision that I absolutely needed a new bike. To that end, I picked up a gorgeous Yeti SB150. This bike is a pro-level rig that can conquer almost any trail around. It was designed and tested in Colorado, so it will be the perfect Durango bike. I look forward to many years and many miles of fun on this turquoise steed. <laughs> it was back to Everstoke. Too cool. Aaron asked us all to help him design and build a top-notch feature. This skybridge is over eight feet off the ground, and it's just the start of what this amazing park will offer to visitors when it opens to the public. This is an excellent idea. Is it uh, worth all the trouble, John? 100% worth all the trouble. Nice. And more. <laughs> Go get it. Go get it. We had a fun and exhausting weekend, working hard and enjoying the rest afterwards. On the way home, I stopped off at the Mare Island Pedal Fest. And I got to see Colorado Kid, Brian, Bike Som. Tell me about the lap. I tried as hard as I could, no, you're good. and I'm paying for it right now with my face. It's, yeah. I'm good. No, it was a good course, like a lot of obstacles, like having the mountain bike's nice because you don't like completely yeah. slide out, yeah. and you can have traction in places they don't. Yeah, I saw so that off. was nice. And a few thousand enthusiastic mountain bikers. Team Like and Subscribe rode the relay race, and everybody there had a blast. October. Riding a bunch of trails back in the Bay Area was a treat. After my travels, it was a pleasure to settle in and hit some local dirt. Skeggs, UCSC, and the demo greeted me with open arms while I chilled with the family and built my garage bar. Towards the end of the month, I traveled back to Colorado and jumped up to Moab for a weekend ride of the whole enchilada with Chet. It's always fun to ride with Chet, and I loved spending the last day of the Moab riding season revisiting this epic ride. Whee! Ooh, it is windy. They said it was going to be windy, and it's windy. <laughs> it had been more than a decade since I initially saw these trails. Get pretty close to the edge here. Okay. It's not much, but it's starting to tire me out. It was an amazing day, and I'm thankful that we were able to enjoy it without any injury or malfunction. Damn, this is a strong wind. Like it, it blows you over. When, it, when a big gust comes along, it'll move you to the right five feet. It's really brutal. Upon my return to Durango, I hit Animus Mountain for a day. This is an unassuming ride nice hill you got here. that many might be tempted to take for granted. 
You got her, you got her. Oh yeah. <laughs> In reality, it's a brutal dance that tests skill and drains confidence. Although the views are stupendous. Looking north up towards Engineer Mountain. Getting to them makes the rider question their decisions. This climb has been brutal. Super junk. Overall, even with the tricky mechanical issue I experienced. Triple black. Like, oh, jeez. And I got a flat. That's awesome. I freaking broke my valve on a rock. What kind of luck is that? And I don't have spare valves. Well, now that I'm tired, let's do some descending. <sighs> it was a good day, and I got back to the house ready to relax and have a good meal. Let's do Snake Charmer. A quick jaunt on a local black trail was too tempting to pass up. Snake Charmer was short but intense. I rode it slow and cautious. BKXE posted his ride on this trail just a few days later and showed me how it's really done. Oh, it goes up that. Well, shoot. I guess I gotta walk it up that. I do not have the run in. November. I jumped on a plane and flew out to Brevard, North Carolina. I joined up with the old crew for what used to be known as the Seth's Trip and rode with Red Wolf Tours for three days in Pisgah Forest and DuPont. As always, we had some great and silly times riding some super challenging stuff. <laughs> Day one saw us in Pisgah riding trails like Cove Creek, Long Branch, and Buttered Cat. Day two put us at DuPont on Rocky Ridge and Ridgeline. Yeehaw! Nice! And day three was back in Pisgah riding Spencer, Fletcher, and Trace. <laughs> I had been on most of these trails before, and that made them even more fun. I knew what to expect, and the leaf-covered autumn dirt didn't seem so scary. I had one extra day in the area, so I took the bike out to Berm Park. It was a super fun day. I'm breathing but I had to keep it short since I forgot to bring water and it was 85% humidity that day. Ooh, look at that. That's a drop. That's intimidating. <laughs> I hit every trail once. High roller. Let's check this out. Okay, I didn't ride roll the dice, the double black, but I did ride clickbait three times. I'm not gonna go and roll the dice. I would love to be able to, but I'd like to do that when I'm here with someone else. That's a big drop. All right, let's have some fun here. And I got to be one of the first on Ladybird, the newest addition to the park. This is a nice trail. Ladybird is a fun and somewhat flowy blue trail that is more than twice the length of any other trail at the park and features some great berms and features. And I'm also not gonna be taking any of those features. Oh my god, that looks like fun though. I see this becoming a big attraction at Burn Park. The flight home was a welcome trip. I got in late and spent some time getting back into the swing of things. I didn't ride much at all. In fact, my first big ride after the trip was more than two weeks after my return to the Bay Area. The Los Gatos turkey ride was a great day to return to the dirt. The day was sunny and warm, and the climb was just as steep and ornery as I remember. That is very, very steep. It's not rocky, but it's very, very steep. This time, I actually got all the way up the steep sections at the top. and I rewarded myself by riding down in a more controlled and safe pace. Are you ready to roll? Let's do it. And away we go. I usually bomb this downhill, but I decided to keep myself off the injured list because I have some big stuff coming up. Too much fun.
December. December was tricky. You see, we've decided to make the big move to Durango and live there full time. To that end, my riding schedule was heavily truncated. Ooh. Okay, so I have too much air in the front tire. Being a San Jose native, I grew up riding places like St. Joe's, Sierra Azul, Calero, Soquel Demo, UC Santa Cruz, and Grant Ranch. Getting some nice color. Oh, and there's the Lick Observatory. I wanted to enjoy these spots a few more times before I started the next chapter of my life. Whew. Unfortunately, while preparing for the move, I pulled my back and took myself out of the action. Thank goodness I had a lot of rides in the latter half of 2022, and they allowed me to post videos pretty much throughout the end of the year. Fortunately, I have an able-bodied son and a few friends who were willing to pitch in and pick up some of the slack. I also wanted to visit with friends, family, and a bunch of the old haunts that I grew up with. Twenty twenty three. I have a great life. I've made mountain biking a major priority in my life, and this passion has taken me places that I never thought I'd go and led me to discover places I never could have dreamed of. Oh, there's your high school tennis. Mom, we don't live here. <laughs> I've traveled thousands of miles during 2022, and 2023 looks to be even more inspiring. Next year's road trip is still in the planning phases, but it looks to be my biggest yet. Settling into a new town in a new state, as well as the fact that Durango gets a lot of snow, means that my posts will taper until the spring. At that time, I hope to pick up where I left off. I have to say thank you to everyone who tunes in for these crazy adventures. I've met some great people in the years since I've started Spokesman MTV, and I look forward to meeting many more. The excitement I get out of riding the trails is only eclipsed by the love and friendships I've been lucky enough to be a part of over these years. Well, what happened here? I didn't mean to lean on it. I look forward to making even more memories with you. Thanks so much for traveling along with me. It's been a wild ride, and it's not over yet. Take care, and I'll see you when I see you.